The eerie light from tonight's blood moon shines through the stained glass windows of Mercy Point Church. The forecast this evening called for heavy rainstorms, and though the night is dry, something disastrous is brewing upon the horizon. The wind blows against the building's edifice, while Pastor Cohen is inside readying the altar for tomorrow's morning service. One large gust of wind blows the front doors of the parish wide open. Pastor Cohen is startled as his attention is brought to the doors of his chantry. Standing just outside the doorway is a silhouette. Pastor Cohen smiles warmly and extends his hand. Please, come in. You'll catch a cold out there. The silhouette hesitates for a moment. The reverend chuckles as he lights a few candles. I'm sure it's warmer in here than it is out there. The silhouette continues to stand in the doorway, motionless. Confused, the smile drops from Pastor Cohen's face, and his expression turns into concern. Is everything all right? Do you need help? Pastor Cohen walks closer to the silhouette and offers a smile. The silhouette finally enters the threshold of the church, and as they do so, they begin to retch. Their body contorts in pain as they begin to howl and shriek. Pastor Cohen jumps at the sudden eruption. He's sure that this person, this thing, needs his help. He outstretches his hand towards the silhouette and opens his mouth to speak. As he does so, the silhouette raises its head to look at Pastor Cohen. Their eyes meet. Struck with fear, Pastor Cohen stutters. Before he can get a word out, the figure lunges at him. We hear the ferocious winds outside accompanied by the cacophony of pained screams echoing throughout the church. We shift our focus to one of the stained glass windows from within as we see it splatter with blood. Suddenly the pastor's screams are no longer heard, but the shrieking of his predator echoes within the empty church as they flee into the night. Hey folks, Isaac here, Keeper and Game Master of the Monster of the Week game that you'll be listening to here. I just wanted to pop in here as a disclaimer that this is our third hunt in our home Monster of the Week game here. Uh, we did do a hunt one and two, obviously, but unfortunately we did not uh, record those for the digital space. Uh, so if there are any references to anything that may come out of the blue that might be a reference to uh, episodes one and two uh, that we unfortunately did not record... Uh, but as if there is enough demand, uh, I'm sure that the players and me as the Keeper would be more than happy to do a recap uh, video or, you know, audio there. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's been a ton of fun making this here, a uh, ton of fun editing. So I'll go ahead and I'll let you guys get right into the story there. But yeah, I hope you guys really enjoy and uh, I hope you guys have as much fun listening as we did making it. So thanks for listening, guys. You did get a mixed success on your premonition, but you are sleeping in bed and suddenly uh, you start to have flashes. Uh, you, I'm, I'm not sure how many run-ins you've had with Pastor Cohen, but I'm sure you've recognized his face from around town. You hear like the sounds of that heart monitor beeping and uh, you swear you see him like on like an operating table. Uh, you see that he is not looking great. Uh, he looks like he's covered in blood. You see flashes of the church. For a moment, your vision goes to something that's just falling. And then you see Jonas for a split second as you can see that uh, he looks up at something and braces himself. And then you just hear that heartbeat just beeping. And suddenly everything goes black and it flatlines. You wake up in a cold sweat. It's a Thursday morning. You guys have school today, unfortunately. And I think we 
reconciled that the night before was when Dr. Boulette came into your house uninvited, unannounced, made you aware of his presence here in Balderston. You uh, wake up, I'm assuming you just kind of get ready for the school day, prepare whatever you need to do. You get on uh, your way to Stillwater High. Before you do end up going, is there anything that different out of the ordinary, I guess, that um, Lewis would do? I would, and I'm not sure if we've talked about, like, my landlord or anything, but I would look into getting my locks changed. Maybe, like, put a note on their door. It's like, hey, I just want to see if it's a possibility we can change the locks on my level. Don't want to get too much into it, but just wanted to make your breast. Yeah, so uh, you definitely kind of, like, scribble up a note, stick it on his door. Yep, I grab my Rockstar, I grab my messenger bag, and I'm off. Very, very cool. Joe Nasty. You wake up by the uh, sound of your alarm. You can hear that there's voices kind of in like main area, just kind of like outside of your room. You definitely know that like one of them, if not two of them, are like your parents, uh, but you hear like them talking to somebody else. I would like the eavesdrop, please. Okay. You kind of like put your ear to the door and you recognize like the voice is Sheriff Ewing. Your room's like far enough out for that like it would be like muffled enough that you couldn't hear them like, what they're saying, but you can definitely make out that they're having, like, a serious conversation. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm just gonna creep out of my room, go through my whole normal routine, pretend I didn't hear shit. In relation to the last hunt, when is this? Uh, about, like, a month and a half. So I guess I'll stroll in, like, normal. I'd like to sort of perch myself behind a corner and start to listen in. Okay. So I think that uh, you kind of, like, perch yourself, like, around a corner. You hear Sheriff Ewing? Yeah. If he's here, I'd be more than happy to speak with him. I just know that they were close, so if anyone's going to have an idea, it ought to be Jonas. And your mom responds, and she says, Yeah, yeah, he should be getting up for school soon, so, I mean, I can grab him then, if that's okay. You don't hear a response from him, but you hear your mom, like, she invites him to sit down at the dining room table. All right, shit. Um, I'll wait a second and then step out. They both definitely see you. Your mom says, oh, Jonas. Um, and she kind of like looks over at uh, Sheriff Ewing and she's like, did Riley spend the night? Is she upstairs or? No, uh, you would have known. Why? What's up? Riley didn't come home last night. I assumed she was staying with one of her friends. I th thought I checked with you guys, the Whitfords. Has she spoken with you at all, Jonas? Uh, do you have any idea where she may be? No, last I talked to her, she was staying after school a little bit later. I don't know what plans she might have had yesterday. I wish I could help more. I'm sorry. I just don't, I don't have anything for you. You see, he kind of nods, uh, and then, like, he stands up. He picks his, like, sheriff hat up off of the dining room table, and he, like, takes a deep breath, and he, like, puts his hat on, and he, he like, thanks your mom, and uh, he kind of, like, waves at both of you and uh, scoots out and walks across the street to Walt's general store. Jonas is just kind of standing there a little awkwardly, looks to his mom, wordlessly asking, like, what? <laughs> Your mom literally shrugs. She's like, God, I hope she's okay. <laughs> I, I mean, of course she is. She's smart. She knows how to handle herself. I would imagine she's gotten into anything. Uh, you see, she kind of, like, nods and kind of just, like, grabs, like, a bag of hers. And she's like, well, are you catching the bus to school? I can maybe drive you. Um... I, I think I'll catch the bus. Thanks. She just grabs her bag and, Are you safe out there today, I guess, Jonas? Jonas gives like a sort of awkward half smile. He just like wave uh, as he finishes getting his shit together to leave. And she kind of like just pats like the door frame and exits. When you do leave across the street at uh, Walter's general store, like you can see that there's like a couple like cops there, including Sheriff Ewing. You can see that the cops are talking to Walt in the doorway. You see that like the front like, window is shattered. That's really all you can really tell across the street. Okay, phone is immediately out. I am texting and calling Riley. Uh, you don't get like a response, and you uh, call her, and it uh, goes straight to voice. Oh now. boy. Um, I'll check her like. Uh, Snapchat story or anything else that like does location tracking. Try and see if I can find where 
her last known location was. Yeah, on her snap map, you definitely see that uh, it looks like she hasn't updated since yesterday afternoon. And where was that? Presumably just like school? Yeah, like yesterday afternoon, like during school. Oh, shit. He like rushes out the door. Yeah, rush to the bus stop. I am texting and calling my friends along the way. Cool, so you uh, catch a ride to school. So, Mr. Billy, I don't know if Billy would wake up at, like, 7.30, uh, if that was something that he would do, or if he'd just kind of sleep in. He's not up at 7.30, but he's probably up around, like, 8.30, gets out of bed at 9. Gotcha. I mean, today is a very, uh, I guess the best word would be a mundane day for you. I mean, today is one of the days that you are free. I don't think you have anything on the schedule. What is... What does a free day for uh, Billy look like? Well, with all this weirdo stuff going on, Billy would go down to like the library and try to like look up this stuff because this is way outside his area of uh, anything. Okay, so you take a gander down at the library. In doing so, I you would also pass uh, what looks like a crime scene here. It looks like the front window is like shattered, uh, unless you like actively go inside. That's all you can see, other than just like. Uh, there seems to be cops and the sheriff that you've met speaking with Walter, the uh, owner of his general store. I mean, Billy's not going to walk in, but he's sure going to shoot a text to Lewis about it. Hey, did you see the police activity? No, I didn't. On my way to school, we'll let Amber know. Sounds good. But yeah, so you definitely are able to make it to uh, the uh, library here. And you uh, start doing some research uh what in particular are you trying to research i think it would start off with like occult stuff just because he had no clue where to start okay i get that uh okay so you're at the library doing some research uh jonas what are you doing when you get to school there oh boy um i'm gonna go meet up with levi and buddy did you hear? Levi kind of like looks up at He's like, no, dude, what happened? Do you not notice we're one short? <laughs> Levi kind of like chuckles and he's like, so what? She's playing hooky. I don't know. Maybe she got sick. I wouldn't want to show my face up here after I, you know, got reamed by Demelza and uh, Milton. Nobody knows she did that shit. Her fucking dad doesn't even know that shit. I signed her goddamn papers to get fucking after school suspension. I don't know. Maybe her dad found out and, you know, you know how he is with shit like that. No, it's not the spray paint. It's the fact that she's fucking missing, dude. No one has seen her since yesterday, dog. Like, not even her dad? Like, did she go home? Not her dad, not you, not me. Nobody. I, of all people, would know. I saw her yesterday. Nothing after that. She didn't say anything. Her phone's, I guess, been off. I tried calling her, texting her, straight to voicemail, not delivered, yada yada. Why are, why are you taking this so easily? Why are you so calm? You see Levi kind of, like, takes a beat, and he's just like, because, I mean, it's weird. I mean, like, it, it is fucking weird, but, I don't know, maybe something Demelza and Milton said kind of resonated with her, and she just wanted to go off the grid for a little bit. Maybe she wanted to leave this dumpy-ass town. Yeah, she's not doing that without telling me. Trust me, I would have told her to do it. I get what you're saying, but that's not Riley. I don't know. Maybe you don't know Riley as well as you thought you did, man. I mean, I, I, give me another explanation. I don't... I mean, I've got another explanation, but you don't want it, so... Yeah, whatever, man. <sighs> No, I'm I'm sorry for giving you shit. I know you don't deserve it. I'm just really fucking worried, dude. You see Levi's like, man, and listen, I'm I worry too. Don't don't think I'm not. It's just, you know, it's Riley can handle herself. Her dad's the fucking sheriff. I don't think anybody's gonna fuck with her, you know? She's bad news, man. In the best kind of way. She's bad news. Well, on another note, you hear that uh I guess somebody broke into Waltz last night? No, I didn't hear that shit. Yeah, fucking front window shattered. Jeez. I mean, I never would have expected that shit. I can kind of see it. I'd imagine he might be hiding some, some shit in there. What, like fucking Fruit Loops, dog? <laughs> you wouldn't need to hide the Fruit Loops. The Fruit Loops are the cover. Genius. And like, as you guys are kind of like shooting the shit, uh, you guys hear like the bell ring, and um, uh, Levi kind of like puts his hand out to like dap you up. I'll see you in third period, dude. <sighs> see you in third. And you guys split up. 
uh, Buddy just like mindlessly forgets where he's going. I like drag Buddy to the point at which our paths split for his class, and I like push him in the right direction. He's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember now. Thanks, thanks, dude. Uh huh. And I go down to my class. Lewis, you get to Stillwater. Uh, this is like at the same time, so uh, it's a little bit before the bell rings there. And I think like you've just like kind of like settled in and like gotten everything ready and shit. Uh, yeah, at that point, I will head over to Amber's classroom. If there's no students in there, I will speak with her. You kind of like walk in there and she's helping a few kids before school. I feel like she like kind of sees you at the door. <laughs> she like takes like a long, deep sigh uh, and like she says something to the kid and she um, comes out into the hallway. Lewis, Mr. Green, it's good to see you. Uh, what's up? I've just heard all this chatter about, I mean, you know, kids and teachers alike with the gossip, um, about some what the church got broken into. I just wondered if you maybe heard something about it. You see that she kind of, uh, she, she closes her classroom door behind her. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about the church. Why are you being really weird right now? I didn't mean to be weird. I was just asking a question. Also, um, if I get a chance to talk to you or Mr. Shelley after school, I would appreciate that. You see, she kind of like nods and she's just like, I don't think we have anything to worry about until a week or two, so. Well, the thing is, I do. I don't want to get too into it, but let's just say my past is literally haunting me. Um, I'll get more to detail with you two after at least you two could help if i have no one else yeah you see that she nods and she's like all right if i have any kids that come in after you know i'll make them scoot but yeah i'll definitely be here after school so okay sounds good um first period that's why i should probably get back to my classroom i will see you she waves and you hear the bell rings kids start to flood into the hallways Billy, you're at the library there. I, I'll say that you like you've been there for like an hour or two, uh, and uh, you've read up on some stuff. You know, uh, what do you want to do after? Or you know. you'd probably only stay there for like you know a little bit over an hour, not too long. So yeah, I mean, you stay for an hour, you learn some shit. But yeah, so what do you do afterward then? I think he'd go home and just start trying like googling stuff. Maybe even freak accidents happening in town before, see if things that like that have happened before or anywhere else. You're kind of like looking through like old news articles and whatnot. Your mom kind of like comes into your room uh, and she's got like a plate with like a sandwich and some chips on it. Hey, Billy, uh, how you holding up? Good, good. I'm just looking at random stuff. I got kind of bored. What are you? Uh, what are you? What are you looking at? Well, do you remember Lewis from? school he's uh teaching now i think right yeah he just piqued my interest so i was just looking at some of the stuff that's great uh it's a fun little hobby i mean you know that stuff's all nonsense right oh yeah but next time i see lewis i you know wanted to show him my knowledge yeah yeah but i i mean you know there's probably no need to look into things weird going on in balderston so oh, okay you could probably just, uh, and you see, like, she kind of, like, reaches for, like, your mouse and, like, tries to, like, overtake it and, like, close out of, like, the tab. And she's like, probably don't need to look into, you know, weird things in Balderston. So. Oh, yeah, it's wild. Weird and totally made up, but creepy. They got Bigfoot and stuff. If you want to look at Bigfoot, he's not from our town. Stuff's creepy. Give me, give me the creeps, you know what I mean? Well, um... Enjoy your sandwich. Let me know if you need anything and uh, keep your nose out of Balderston. And she says that like in a, like a joking tone and kind of like laughs. And she kind of like closes the door behind her as she leaves. Interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. Okie dokie. All right. With that, uh, we'll kind of jump on over. Uh, we'll play through uh, the, uh, the school day. Uh, we start with the first bell ringing and we end with the final bell. Lewis, somewhere along the day, Mr. Shelley passed you like in the hallway. He like slipped this into your coat pocket and it's his uh, ingredient list. Jonas, uh, the last bell lets out. Uh, you're out of your uh, class. Uh, so you kind of like get to the bus stop, take the ride home there. By this point, like the police have uh, cleared out of all Walt's general store, but there's still like police tape and like the there's probably like a tarp over where like the glass was shattered. Mm, yes. 
does it appear to be still off limits? Walt's got to make a living. So, I mean, he's probably like still allowing customers to come in and whatnot, but it's like a quote unquote active crime scene. Dope. I'm going to slip into that store. As you enter in, like he probably waves you and he's like, hey, Jonas. Hey, Walt. Uh, he just kind of like goes back to like reading a newspaper there. Uh, I'm just going to start wandering the aisles, faking like I'm about to buy anything. Um, and I would like to use my telepathy to start listening in on what's going on in this guy's head. I'm thinking this might be like an investigative mystery. Uh, so go ahead and just roll uh, plus sharp. Okay. Ten. Ten? Uh, so yeah, it looks like you have uh, you can hold two. First question, what happened here? So I think that uh, in the way that like your telepathy works here is that um, you kind of like uh, essentially like get into this guy's head uh, and the eyes on the owl pendant kind of like glow just a little bit. You just kind of like start to hear like these whispers and you hear uh, Walt kind of say, he's like, yeah, Jonas is a good kid. I'm sure I don't have to worry about him stealing my meats and whatnot. And I think you have one more question there. Um, I'll do where did it go, I guess. I'll see if he like caught... Because it sounds like he kind of caught somebody in the act. It doesn't look like he caught something in the act, but more so you watch like from his eyes, essentially. He enters his general store, the window, front window already shattered. The glass door to like the meat cage, <laughs> I guess the best way to call it is, like the meat fridge. Uh, is like wide open. There's a bunch of just like packages of just like raw beef and chicken and stuff just piling. Uh, like you see, as he like picks one up off the ground that like the plastic has been like ripped away, and it looks like someone just like took a fucking chunk out of it. You definitely see pieces of meat that have been like torn apart on the ground. Then you know, you're back, back in your memories, your now memories. Cool. Um. So I guess I'll just peruse around for another minute or two. Before I uh, just buy, like, an Arizona and a fucking chocolate bar or something and and head out. Well, I'm sorry, actually, can I investigate the meat? The meat? Uh, yeah. What type of meat is it? Is it, like, deli meat, like, cold cut type shit? Or is it, like, rotisserie chicken? Like, those packaged, like, ta- like the uh, taco meat, like, uh, raw uh, beef and chicken and stuff like that. Like, chicken on the bone, chicken breast. Like that kind of package stuff there. So it's not like the deli meat, but it's more so like like the cold packaged meat, like the raw meat. Mm, noted. And is there, I'd imagine not, but is there anything uh, left of what could be an active crime scene? Anything that maybe the police overlooked? I think that may have been like uh, what is being concealed here. So I think that like that's probably what you can gather. At this point, like this is just stuff, stuff that you can see. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so I'll just do what I said before, uh, buy my little things, head out. You kind of see, like, as you go to, like, the uh, register, Walter is just like, same thing as always, huh, Jonas? Yeah, one of these days I'll switch it up, but why start now, you know? He kind of, like, laughs a little bit, he, like, rings you out there, like, puts your stuff in a bag, gives you the bag, and I'll see you tomorrow, I guess. I, like, give him a wink and just kind of exit. Mr. Green, Mr. Lewis Green, uh, it is after school. You've been slipped uh, your note from uh, Mr. Shelley. It seems like all like the students are like clearing out and whatnot for the day. I'll go to Amber's room. Okay, so there's something coming for you. Is that what you're talking about? Your past is haunting you? Is it of supernatural nature or? I honestly don't know at this point because he got into my house the other night without any signs of forced entry. This is someone that you've known from, like, your childhood, or, like, from Balderston, or... From Bowling Green. Okay, so they're not from here. No, so it's weird that they're here in the first place. I don't know if that's really our problem. I mean, have you gone to the police about it? I gave them a description, and I had the locks changed, but he's basically threatened to make my life a living hell. And I was wondering if there's some, I don't know, extra insurance we can make to kind of keep him out of my home again like you want me to kill him no not kill him but is there some magic-y thing either you or 
Dr. Shelley could do to secure, to like bar him from my home. It, this just sounds, I mean, I have, obviously I don't know exactly what you're, but this seems like just a regular guy. I feel like a lock should stop him. Well, it should have stopped him last night. My door was locked when I left and he was just in my living room. I'm on the third floor of the apartments across the street from school. Louis, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe it's just a criminal. I don't know. Doesn't sound supernatural to me. I, I, I don't know. It's just not ringing any bells. I've never heard of a creature that just lets people get off scot free like that. Um, uh, Lewis will bite his tongue, and hopefully the police get a handle on this. But I, I don't know. It's, it's just very concerning that he got him like with no effort whatsoever. Like I said, if it was something supernatural, I could definitely kick its ass. But I mean, I don't want to go to jail for murdering a regular guy. Uh, I, I, I understand. I understand. We don't really have to expect anything for another month, so I'm kind of laser focused on that kind of thing, just making sure that we are prepared for, you know, what's in store here for us. Last monster was a bit peculiar, so. Uh, yeah, I, I'm still not quite over that. Um, Yeah, um, yeah I'll be I'm probably just going to pack up at this point and head home. Um, I'll see him. Cool. You pack your stuff up. Oh, yeah, I'm off the home. I'll see if there's any, like, through the normal way I communicate with my landlord, which I'm assuming is just a long series of sticky notes we stick on each other's doors. I'll see if there's a sticky note on either my or their door. Yeah, you see, like, there's, like, a sticky note on your door and it just says, locks changed. Sick. I'll, I'll probably turn on my TV and realize that I haven't turned on the TV since we were watching Spider-Man the one night and be like, well... I might as well finish it. Okay. You hear uh, there's like a knock on like your front door. I'll open my door. And you see uh, the second floor neighbor, Maureen. She's uh, she has like a like an arm full of envelopes. Uh, Maureen, what can I do for you? Your your hands are full. Can I help you with that? You can take them off my hands. They're yours. Yeah, they keep getting delivered to my door. My name's not Lewis Green. I know that. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be terse with you, it's just, um, I wanted to go to evening mass tonight, but Father Cohen is just nowhere to be seen. That's strange, he's usually quite a punctual guy. Yeah, in a world like this, I'm not surprised. Time's an illusion these days, you know? Maybe he got injured or something, you know? There's, um, blood on my favorite stained glass. Blood? I don't know, it's some red liquid or something maybe they were painting, I don't know. It looked like blood. You know, walk like a duck, talk like a duck, you're a duck. It looked like blood, talked like blood, it was blood. It talked? Blood can't talk. Um, uh, but yes, uh, thank you again so much. Um, if you hear anything about Father Cohen, let me know. I'm, now I'm getting a little concerned for him. Okie dokie. Uh, and you see she kind of like just huddles away. Um, and at that point, I will uh, text Billy and say, You live near the church, right? Sure. Do you want to try to get Jonas and check it out? My neighbor said she saw blood on the stained glass. Maybe it's not our type of hunt, but it doesn't hurt to cover our bases. I mean, as long as I'm back to start my stream, sure. Am I picking you up? Uh, yes, please. And uh, you go to pick him up. I'm assuming you guys go on down to uh, the church. Jonas. Hey, oh. You have a knock on your door after like an hour or two of just kind of being at home. I go check who it is. You see that Sheriff Ewing is just kind of like standing out the front door. Oh shit. But it seems like he's in just like regular clothes. Like he's not in like his sheriff outfit. Civilian clothes. Fancy. Hello. Uh, just a moment and then I'll put down whatever the fuck I was doing. Probably reading over my grimoire. That is my Kindle. And then I will rush to the door. He says, Jonas, uh, obviously I don't mean to be too forward here, but um, do you mind if I speak with you privately? I, I mean, I just, I don't know what's going on. And I know that you and Riley are close. It's just, do you mind gestures to like his car? Oh, his car. Okay. I'll slip on my shoes. I'll rush back to my room, actually grab my Kindle, sort of slip it into um, like a small little backpack like drawstring bag i guess i don't know kindle case i don't know i don't fucking own a kindle <laughs> um and i'll head to his car he gets in his side and he obviously lets you get in uh once you get in pulls out of the driveway he starts driving back to the ewing household he doesn't say a word like almost the entire drive jonas is not trying to to fill the silence he he gets it 
but you guys like pull into the Ewing household. He kind of like clears his throat. He's like, "Did you um, did you have dinner or anything like that?" I... Uh, no, I just got home recently. I mean, I'm not particularly hungry. If you're offered, can I get you like a water, diet coke? Water, yeah, sure, thanks. He kind of uh like reaches into like the fridge, grabs like a bottle of water, kind of like tosses it at you. Riley didn't show up at school at all today. Jonas just shakes their head. Sits you down at the table, and he's like, and you see he like reaches into like the fridge, grabs like a beer, and he just like sits down at the table like across from you, and he like shakes his head, and um, I messed up, I think. I'm sure Riley already told you about it. Uh, no. She hasn't said anything to me. What happened? Riley and I got into it a couple days ago, um, and she hasn't been talking to me for a couple days. You know, it was just stuff about college, just figuring out what's going on, you know, future stuff. You know, I'm sure you've had that talk with your parents that it's just, uh, you know, that difficult conversation of, you know, what you're going to do and, you know, how Riley is. She's a free spirit and she just, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't think, she doesn't plan. She doesn't, she just lets the waves wash over her. Lives life, you know, as a spectator. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I do. She's remarkable, Jonas. It's just, I don't want that potential to be wasted. And so I, you know, I, we got in an argument and, you know, I, I was yelling. She was yelling back at me and she hasn't talked to me since. And now she's just gone. So is there a place, you know, that you guys have that's, you know, like hidden away from everybody, a spot in the woods or like an abandoned house or something? I, anything that I might be like, I, I promise I won't bother you guys at your secret hiding place if you tell me about it. It's just, I gotta know where she's at, Jonas. I mean, is the old rundown bowling alley? I think they went out of business however however long ago. We have ran down there a couple times when one of us needed to, like, clear our mind, but... I, I understand. I mean, believe it or not, I was, a, <laughs> I was a kid once, too. I understand. You? Oh, no way. I mean, you could have fooled me. I would have firmly believed you popped out the womb, a crotchety old man. He chuckles, but you said that you hung out at the bowling alley and whatnot? Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, we wouldn't head down there too often, but every now and then, yeah. Just a fun little little spot off the, in the cut. Do you know what that means? Um, the cut? It, never mind. He rubs his face, and Jonas, I, I do appreciate it. I do thank you. If you guys want to hang out down there, obviously I'm not going to bust you. I promise you we we do nothing illegal down there. As you say that, can you roll me a plus sharp? Uh, nine. You feel your entire body just shiver, and you just get the sense that something bad is about to happen. And you probably make your way uh, to the church here. There's a small puddle like dried up and you can see uh, adjacent to it is like one of the stained glass windows just like splattered so i mean in this situation uh just because like it looks like there's like clues and i mean at this moment it doesn't seem like there's a threat it would just be investigative mystery i got an eight uh so with an eight you get to hold one um, I guess I'll start with, obviously, what happened here. That puddle. Can I confirm, now that I'm on top of it, that it is blood? Yes, you can. Uh, and, like, on, like, the splatter that's on the, uh, stained glass. The window blood looks, like, a darker red. However, the puddle that's on the floor looks like it dried up a little bit more, is more of, like, a pinkish hue. Would it be safe to assume that these are bloods from two different things? I think you could definitely tell that, I mean... The attack originated from the puddle there. That's weird. Um, I'll turn around to Billy. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yeah, I think something's going on in here. There, There's no sign of Father Cohen. You found anything? This isn't really what I do. It just looks like blood to me. I mean, same here. But a giant blood splatter, no sign of a body or an attacker. That sounds freaky paranormal to me. We're going to end up doing this a lot more, I imagine. Billy, uh, I'll use your oops moment here looking around uh you find uh what looks like a necklace that has like a cross on it it looks like it's got like ash and all over it like it's blackened hey lewis look at that and i point to it oh 
a burned cross. There's no sign of fire anywhere in here. Well, we definitely got some more demonic entities on our hands. Uh, that's great. Jonas, you are kind of like having like this conversation with Sheriff Ewing, and suddenly you hear from one of like the side doors of the Ewing household like slide open, and you see that Sheriff's ears perk up. You see that he kind of like smiles. Jonas kind of like puts up a hand and is like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's probably Riley. We can... Are you, so are you like trying to like convince him to like stay? Yeah. I'll just try and like appeal to him on the basis of like with the recent like attacks and whatnot all across town might be best to not just you know run into these things uh so readily maybe just take another second for consideration that type of deal go ahead and roll to uh manipulate someone so go ahead and roll plus charm cool um uh and i roll a 13 nice that's good. Uh, but yeah, with Manipulate Someone on the 10+, plus, they just do it for the reason you gave them. You see that like the excited look on his face just kind of drops. I guess you're right. Proceed with caution. Smart. Gotta keep that danger sense up, Sheriff. And you hear like these heavy footsteps. Sounds like someone is like, with every step, they seem to like kind of like stomp. Like they lead with all of their weight. The area in which like you're hearing like the noise. You see this creature emerges from the darkness. Uh, it looks like a it looks like a human, uh, but you see that their fingers have like these long sort of like claws. Their head is bowed down, and they have like this blonde hair that's just crazy all over the place, covering their face as they whip their head up. You see just this creature with these black, like, you know, like the whites of your eyes, but they're black. And the pupils are just this like deep yellow. As you see their face illuminated, their mouth and just like their chest is just covered in blood. And they just let out this hiss. Riley? 